Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. It is time to unbox some surprising markers. Surpri Remember the surprising markers I talked about in Sat Chat? Maybe you do, maybe you don't, maybe you're new here. If so, welcome, I'm glad to have you along. So what we're gonna do is take a look at what came in the mail just about an hour ago. And I've been so very excited to check these out. So these are Ohuhu Extra Wide Art Markers, the Molokai series. And let's take a look here. We will, uh, I will also have a review on these, but right now we're going to start off by unboxing them and seeing what's inside. We've got a brochure about the markers and it goes over the other lines that they currently have. The uh, Honolulu and Honolulu B, those are the brush markers. The Honolulu has a brush and chisel tip and the Honolulu B has a brush and fine tip. It's really great for stampers um, or coloring book enthusiasts. And don't mind my wrist, I burnt myself on the tea kettle reaching over the steam, so I know it's gross, I'm sorry. Um, then we've got the Oahu, which is their kind of classic line that has the bullet and the chisel tip. Then we have the Kala series, which is a new slim chisel tip and a bullet tip. And now we have the Wide, which is a single-ended marker and it's got the extra wide. Uh, tip and it's it's uh well we're gonna take we're gonna take a look at it so um they always have lots of great information in their brochures so I highly recommend if you order anything of those there's take a chance uh, take a chance take a moment and look at the brochure so here we have a swatch card and we also have a um stickers to go on the ends of markers now I don't know if I started this trend or not I like to think I did but I probably didn't but um back in the day I could probably grab one of the markers where I did it Back in the day, uh, I took uh, label stickers and I punched circles and I colored them with the markers and I stuck them on the ends of my caps because the the little label on the end of my pro markers and prisma colors were so bad. And then um, I made some some labels for my marker barrels for different brands. And then a couple of years later, I noticed that companies were coming out with stickers and I think it's a great idea because. I think having the swatch on your marker is so much more convenient than having to refer to a paper. Swatch, especially if you have more than one set, you know, and you've got, you'll have swatch papers everywhere. <clears throat> so that's a really great way to do it. It just takes a little time, but if you start from the beginning by swatching your markers that way, then uh, that's a great idea. They never match the plastic caps perfectly. So they came right up with stickers to go on the caps, which is nice. This is Tropical Vintage. So let's take a look here. Um, oh, they got a foam insert in there with our markers. Here, oh, let's take a look. That's nice. That's going to keep them really well organized. So let's see, what color is this? Oh, it's printed right on here. Lipstick Red R170. Caps are a little firm. So let's swatch our little, let's swatch Lipstick Red here. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's satisfying. It's kind of hard to be, to keep a straight line, but... Oh, this is very satisfying. Nice. The next color is Summer Lemon. I think this one was the more vibrant, like, of the sets that they offered. They probably just go, bloop. yep, just like that. Then we have, oh, they feel good. They're like a matte. They're not that shiny white plastic. They're matte and they've got the actual numbers pr like printed right on them. I love that. Deep Olive Green, Y43, GY43. I'll have to see if these, like how these um, compare with the, if these are the same as their brush markers. You know, if they have the same, they look like the same numbers as the brush markers, but I won't swear to it unless I compare them side by side. Then we have Ultramarine 190. I know I did two coats of that. Probably two coats would be a good idea, then you don't have a streaky look. Ooh, that's pretty, isn't it? Then we have... Natural Oak, YR91. Yeah, I think these are probably, oh, you know, I will tell you though, the, li the lids are kind of tough to remove. So just uh, keep that in mind if you have strength issues. Now I wonder, oh, you know what? I think one side of the nib is, one side of the nib feels smoother than the other. Like, 
I saw something on the website about textured effects, texture effect nibs. So I'm wondering if one side you get a you get a really smooth blade of color, and the other side you get more of a dry brushed effect. I think that maybe I'll have to, uh, you know, like this isn't a review. We will get to the review, but I'm just doing the unboxing part too because I know a lot of people enjoy that, and I'll, I know I know. I can watch an unboxing sometimes and get that feeling like I just shot for something and save some money. So if that helps you out, then I'm glad. And this is black. Let's go the other way and see if one way. Yeah, you know what? I think if you have the if you have the smooth side, if you have the unprinted side up, you get a smoother application. Okay, and you've got some extras too. I guess, um, I don't know what the extra stickers would be for. Maybe if you want to put them on on the body, maybe? I don't know. It's got like a little one for the end, which doesn't have anything on the end. These are single-ended markers. All right, so I wanted to let these dry before I tried to put the stickers on. So let's go to our first one, which was Lipstick Red. This is Ultramarine. These are, it's actually pretty easy to read, which I'm, I'm thankful for. And then we would put a stick around just like so, and then the little one on the other side. Nice! Look at that! I goes a little crooked. Can I lift it up? Maybe they give you extras in case you mess up putting it on. Oh, you seem to have a little bit of time to lift it up and redo it if you need to. Oh, good grief. There we go. Good enough. Good enough for this place. And then we've got our Summer Lemon, which is right here. I won't do this for everyone. I'll do the rest of those off camera, but I thought it would just be fun to, to see how that goes. It's pretty easy. Sometimes things are tedious, and this is pretty, pretty easy. Maybe sticking the labels on is a little tedious, but... Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited to play with these. Um, now you want to keep in mind how you're going to put them back in the box so that they're kind of like angled towards you and then you've got the, the numbers all going the same way if that's something that you're particular about. It probably honestly wouldn't bother me, but I know it would bother some people. I'm going to try to keep doing it right because it probably bothers some viewers. <laughs> oh, did I even show you that? Like, see? So you have these going the same way. And then next we have Deep Green Olive. I like to do this because I've noticed like when I've done stickers before, if um, if I have not waited long enough for it to dry, then the stickers don't want to stick. So that's why I, I was going in this order specifically so that they have time to dry. And I know one of these kits has a colorless blender on it, so I suppose you could... Um, you could fill it with whatever ink, and maybe they'll offer the colorless, colorless blenders on their own, and they'll be cheaper than, <clears throat> pardon me, the Copic ones, and then you can have a, you know, your own custom wide marker for less. Especially with this situation with the Copic caps, I really um, am not feeling too confident. You can refer to Sat Chat a couple weeks ago for that particular uh, discussion. I'm not going to get into it here because this is it's about a different brand, but uh, oh, I'm so excited. These feel really nice in the hand too. I love that matte finish. It's funny how something just like having a matte versus a, a glossy finish can make something feel a little bit more um, fancy. Whoops, I forgot to do ultramarine. That's all right. That sticker was dry, so not a big deal. So packaging looks really nice, and the product seems really nice. I'm very excited to, to try these. I would use these with other markers, not just on their own, unless I was doing like life drawing or something, and I, you know, needed to be fast. And this one is black. Oh, it's kind of hard to read the numbers because the black is so dark. But you wouldn't, it'd be fine because you can see the color. That's the more important thing. And you've got that number and the uh, name on the side of the barrel, so... That one did not stick down very good. Oh, I'm really excited for these. Finally, something something really new and different. Because you get to a point where 
you re like I review a lot of products. I enjoy comparing them and reviewing them. Luckily, I get to do it for you know my my channel, which has become my job for the most part. But um, it's nice when something new comes along because a lot of times it's just the same exact markers, just with a different brand name on it, like coming from a different factory. So again, we have our brochure and our swatch. These are the gray tones. Oh, the nice thing about these is that um, they're using the typical names and not the weird names that they were using in like some of them. And it could just be they have so many colors that they couldn't just use all normal names, but like cool gray zero, you know, that's a normal name. That's something I would, I would, you know, expect to see the color I'd see on any brand. I don't know. I guess you could skip ahead if you don't want to watch me swatch these. This is uh, Cool Gray 2. Let's see. It does seem to be smoother application when you go with the, um, with the, when you go with the unprinted side up. Actually, this will be good because we'll see if we have any dry ones. Cool gray. Oh no, what did I do? Oh no, that was neutral gray. Oh, I shoot, I swatched it in the wrong spot. There's a neutral gray too. Ah, darn it, I messed it up already. Luckily not on the swatch that goes on the, um, on the marker, which is the important one. So this is cool gray too. There we go. <laughs> ah, close enough. I'm gonna give this another swipe because I yeah, I get them. You get a much smoother swipe if you have the unprinted side up. It seems. <clears throat> and we have a little bit of odor from these. Um, yeah, probably a little bit more than typical. It's probably just because of the size of the nib. You're just getting much more of the <clears throat> of the aroma wafting back to you. I think I'll swatch them, but I don't think, so this one I think is, that's more the rough side and that's more the smooth side. Cool gray five. Um, yeah, like give a little pressure on the rough side. You can get a little bit of a texture. Maybe I'm, maybe there's no difference and I'm just making it up. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's funny though. Um, then we've got cool gray seven. So you get a nice, a nice smooth one from that side, but that's also pretty smooth. I don't know. Maybe I'm just confused. And then we've got the colorless blender, which we'll take a look at that, but we don't need to swatch it out because it's just a clear blender. So yeah, there is a, there is a little bit of a little more odor than a typical marker, I think just because of the size. I'm just gonna put these back in here and I will stick the stickers on later. You don't need to, you don't need to do that right now. This way I can just keep them in the set. I'll put them all, you know, cattywampus so I'll know that they haven't been, uh, they haven't been swatched. So let's look at this one here. This is, I'm not sure which one this is. I like the packaging a lot. Um, especially for these, I think it will be easier to keep them organized versus just a loose bag. And this is the... What do they call this one? Um, sky, sky Glass. That's pretty. Oh, you know what? I think the... <clears throat> there. Just to do it like that. Oh, that makes sense. Alright. Jesus. Jade Green. Jade Green. Ooh, that's pretty. That looks like beach glass. Isn't that nice? Oh, that's so subtle. That's a beautiful color. I'm really gonna have to see if these if these um, are the same as the brush markers. This one is turquoise blue. Oh man, they should call this sea glass. Yeah, it's sky glass. I'm like, did I read it wrong? Because that's totally an option. 
Shade green, turquoise blue, right? I'm double checking so I don't miss swatch again. Look at that, isn't that pretty? Those colors are so pretty. I'm so excited. I'm putting them back in the opposite way so I know which one I swatched. This is Dolphin Blue. Oh, that's pretty too. These are gorgeous. Sky Glass. Hmm. You know, these are pretty comfortable to hold, too. I was wondering, look how, see, I did that side, look how smooth and even that is. Um, I think they glide better on the, uh, yeah, I think they just glide better on the, if you have the unprinted side up. Must be the bevel of the marker. Um, these are really pretty, and they're comfortable to hold. It'd be really interesting to do a sketch of these teal. And I'm wondering if they might get a little more, a little easier to, to um, maneuver once you're used to them. Or I'm sorry, a little bit easier to open the caps once you're, once you're used to them. Like sometimes the caps start off really hard to remove, but after a few opens and closes, they get a little easier. I don't have any uh, problems with strength in my hands. I don't have arthritis or anything. But I like to mention it because I know a lot of people do uh, struggle. See that little bit of texture there? And this side is, is more flat. And I think it's I think it's intentional. I think it's for like, because um, I was reading the, the paperwork on their website. It said something about textured effects. And I think that's, I think that's what they mean. Um, brilliant blue. So I did a little bit of, of looking up as soon as I, I knew they were releasing on the 12th. And so... I did stock their website. Let's see how nice and flat when I do that side. So that's gonna be that's that's gonna be interesting. I love how they printed it right on the right on the uh, the box though. And then let's see, we got one more set to look at. And that's one I actually opened up. I opened it up uh, on Sat Chat because I was like, oh, it's here. No, it's not that one. Which one was it? Halcy Halcyon Oasis? Oh, yeah, that's probably it. And what did I do with those? Right, right here. Halcyon Oasis. That's a pretty name. Halcyon, like Halcyon Days. I forgot what that meant. What does it mean, like, when you have, like, days? Um, you can't return to like nostalgia, maybe. I don't know. This is May Green. Ooh, that's pretty. Let's do the smooth side. That's nice. Then we have Moss. That sounds pretty. I'm already feeling like getting a feel for this. Just just swatching them, I'm getting a nice feel for these markers. It's kind of like holding a large paintbrush. Those are gorgeous colors. Those could those will be really handy in landscapes. Pale grayish blue. Oh, that is pale. It'll be interesting to see if the pales go dry. Um, it always feels like my lighter pastel colors tend to go dry faster. I don't know if it's it because I use them more because they tend to be really handy for blending. Smoky blue. Or if the higher alcohol content in the lighter color is what causes that. This is hazelnut. Hazelnut. <laughs> Not hazelnut. Hazelnut. favorite kind of coffee. And this is leather. Those are, this is a gorgeous combination. Why does this look familiar? This combination looks familiar for some reason. I wonder if Copic had a, had a, col had a collection similar to this because that does look very familiar. Okay guys, I'm gonna put the stickers on the ends of these. I'm gonna play with these a bit. I can show we could put the swatches out so you can see that. Um, currently there are only these four sets. And honestly, I can't imagine they would expand this line too much because you're not gonna 
probably need a large marker in too many colors. Um, I think it's going to be more for like uh, quick renderings because like if you look at these grays and you look at these earth tones like those would be perfect for um, either doing a total underpainting or doing architecture. These greens and blues would be good for landscape. Um, then there's some primaries just for like fast rendering like if you think caricature artists things like that they might want to just get something really quick. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if they if they'll add on to the series or not. But um, but yeah, you could buy all four for just under a hundred dollars if that's something you're interested in, or just get like maybe the grays and see if you know if you like to do architecture, pick up the grays. If you like to do landscapes, maybe pick up the um, Molokai, uh, the uh, Halcyon Oasis, because that gives you a little bit of green, a little bit of blue, lighter colors. You can layer them. Um, or get, get both of those if you do a lot of landscapes. Those would be good for rocks and architecture though. This one would probably be the least useful for me because I am unlikely to need to block in such a large area unless I was doing signs. This would be really good for sign artists if you like work in a, a shop and you're making custom signs because you could get really creative with these colors and you know cover a large area in a short amount of time. Or if you're in theater or something like that, it would be handy for theater. Um, but I think they are very well thought out because you do have that basics for theater, then you have the architecture and landscape, and I mean, you could even do uh, a little bit of figurative work, um, like people in fashion and stuff, although I would like a really pale pink if I was going to do, um, or some corals or something like that if I wanted to do portraity things, but I don't think that's really what this is designed for. Maybe they'll come out with a portrait set for, like, uh, people like to sketch at, um, fashion shows or life drawing classes and stuff because you wouldn't, I mean, you'd just want a handful of markers for something like that and where you could do different marks. Let's do some different marks though while we, uh, while we have this here. I'm just trying to think, do I have a marker paper? Oh, I do. I'll grab my, uh, I'll grab my old hoo -hoo sketchbook actually. And we can work on this. We can try that out. So this one does not come with a little, little page protector. I have one in my book already, so I'll just use that. So let's play with that a bit. Maybe I'll play with the uh, the tropical vintage because that one's got the brighter colors, and those will show up really well on camera. So, oh, and I, those are the ones I swatched too. So lucky, lucky pick for me. So let's just take the lipstick red because red's my favorite color, and see what sort of lines that we can get. So. I go light. See, we can get a little bit of a dry brush effect. Oh, that's so cool. Now let me try it on the other side. Yeah, the other side is definitely wants to give me more of a um, Purina. Uh, definitely gives me more of a solid, a solid effect. But can I get a solid effect? It the definitely the uh, to me this side here. Where there's no printing, that gives me a more solid effect. Can I get a dry brush effect from that side? I can, but it's not as easy. And it could just be the angle, honestly. It could be the angle that that's making it easier to do a dry brush effect. Um, okay, so you might be able to do like large calligraphy. Oh yeah, you totally could. I mean, if I did calligraphy, but that would be really good for sign for sign artists or anything like that. Let's see what kind of thin lines we can get. There's the chisel edge. There's just working on the edge of the chisel. Wow, you can actually get pretty fine if you want to work on just the point. I'm trying to see what the shape of that. It's just like a basic chisel chisel shape, but look at that. We can get really fine. Look at that though. That's like razor sharp. I don't know how long you would be able to keep an ink flow at that fine amount or how long that chisel would last, but that's kind of cool. I'm pretty impressed with that, actually. There's obviously some bleed through because it is an alcohol marker, but I'm going to work on the back side of that because I don't really want to waste. I like this paper. I don't want to waste it. <laughs> uh, let's see. So if I wanted to do something like water, Oh, yeah. I can press more and get a wider line. I could even go... I could go at an angle and get some wider lines. Look at that. 
yeah, depending on how you angle it or go like straight. See, could I do grasses? Just need to turn your wrist so that you get a different, you can go from the dry brush, from a dry brush to get in some, uh, a full area of that texture, then you could go in. Oh, that's fun, that's fun. Oh, I need something to draw. Because uh, I think it would be fun to kind of draw something. Oh, I'll draw one of my little mannequin. I'll draw one of these mannequin people, why not? Hello! Let's do that. Oh, I don't know, that's probably a little too. Maybe I'll just do the torso area. I'll do that around, give that a try. Let's see what it's like just to, like, if I was doing. These are fun. These are really fun to work with. Oh, the legs bent backwards. That's not good. <laughs> Let's see. I wonder if I want to add some shading. It's crude. But it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun, I gotta say. Yeah, the more, I think the more you get used to this, uh, this type of marker, this shape. Now this isn't going to be perfect for everyone. If you're like coloring small images, um, it might not be, but if you like to do, if you need to do some backgrounds though, I think that would be really nice. Oh, I, now I wish I put all my, my swatches on because then I could like, I could tone it in like with this, uh, Hazelnuts. That's with the what? Halcyon Oasis. Where's that one? Is it here? Hazelnuts right here. Let's color it in. Oh my gosh. How fun. Let's see. Oh, you know what? We've got this edge here where we get like a regular sized chisel like tip. This right? edge here, we have that regular sized chisel tip that we can use. You know when you gotta get into those smaller areas. Oh man guys, I think I kind of love these. Yeah, that's something I didn't really really even notice that little kind of cut off area there is like your regular size chisel tip so it's just you know, use it as an extension of your hand. It's, um, it's so cool. So let's try leather as well. Is that this one right here? Yes. I'm glad they have the names on the sides. So I can use again that chisel edge. Because this is a little bit lighter. And transition the colors a little bit. Now I'm not like planning anything, I'm just kind of having fun. That's cool. All right, I can't wait to play with these some more and then come back with my final thoughts, but right now I am super, uh, I'm super excited for this. I have my first bone to pick, and that is that, uh, and this is why I got confused, I think, on the swatch chart. 
Um, their neutral gray 2 is CG020, and their cool gray 2 is CG2. Why not do NG, like neutral gray? Why do that? Why? Okay, that's the only problem that I've seen, and so it did mess up my stickers, and then uh, I got all out of sorts. But uh, it's all fixed now, but still, that that's... Um, I just, actually, I wish I just did cool grays and didn't have that neutral gray in there because I think that might um, be a little annoying out, but I guess it would be all right for architecture. I think I'd rather have, instead of the neutral gray too, I'd rather have like a a cool gray nine and just keep, just give me a, a nice, a nice range of the cool grays and not have one random neutral gray. But so far, that's my only qualm with these markers. Uh, but they're all swatched and stickered and uh, yeah, just need to make some artwork with them. All right, I did a couple artworks with the markers, so let's take a look at those. And I used the uh, newer Ohuhu sketchbook they sent me as a Christmas present, so it's got the smoother paper than the one I just sketched on uh, at the first part of the video. This is from a photo I took of my dog napping on the couch this morning, and um, I used the markers, and then I, um, you know, I didn't have exactly the colors that I needed, like for the burgundy in the background, so I used that red and then I uh, did some of the shading with the brilliant blue and then I went over everything with the aquamarine and then went over it with red again to kind of mix it and get that get that color from those three. Um, I layered up the uh, hazelnuts and leather and natural oak and black to do the dog. I also used some of the different grays and then I did go in with a white pen. The fine black lines were done with the black marker on the edge. One thing I noticed is that on some of the um, on some of the sharp edges of the markers, and I'll show you that again in a second. Uh, like the black, I got a really nice fine edge from that that sharp edge, but on other colors, I couldn't get any ink on the sharp edge. I'll show you what I mean because it, maybe it's not meant to be used like that, but I thought I would just show you in case you know you just want to go sketch with those big fat markers. You don't have to you know, and you don't want to bring smaller markers because I did these with just the wides, and then I used a white gel pen to get some highlights there. And then, um, and this sketchbook came with a big like plastic sheet to put between the pages, which was great because um, I really saturated up the ink. That said, I saturated up the ink, and you can see on the back side of that. Um, so I guess it would be more of a review of the sketchbook. It didn't transfer. It didn't puddle up on the um, on the plastic sheet. On this one, I did get some puddling with the blue on the back on the plastic sheet in the back. I'll show you just a little bit though. I don't even know if you can pick that up on camera. You see just a little bit there. Um, but that's, I'm so glad that came with that sketchbook because I really like these papers and they work pretty well. It's like a thick, well, not really that thick. It's kind of like a Bristol though. Um, so then I did this one with the markers mostly. I used the uh, colors from the Halcyon Oasis. That worked really well, but I also used some of the, uh, like the teals here in the glass sky kit. So um, that worked great. I did use a little colored pencil and gel pen on top just to um, merge your colors together a bit, but this was really fun, and um, I did kind of dive right in with a marker, so I had some really choppy dark areas in the sky, but um, I was able to kind of, you know, push them into something of a, <laughs> of the effect that I wanted by, uh, uh, by using the pencils. I used some washi tape. I stuck it to my clothes first before I stuck it on the paper to give me a nice edge there because um, with the wide markers it can be harder to get. It's easy to draw a straight edge but it can be hard to like do a couple layers and not have things like scooch out. Like I got you know a little overlap there where I wasn't sure how long I wanted that thing to go. I was kind of thinking of a quilt after I started uh, doodling there. Um, so it can get a little bit of rough rough around when you have to go around areas. So if you had like another marker, another set of markers that are smaller tipped, that would be handy to go in and get like a brush marker to go in and get around. Oh, by the way, you're probably wondering what markers use the same color systems. And I wrote that down. I'm going to go make sure I get that piece of uh, paper because I don't want to tell you wrong. So the um, Molokai, is that how you say it? Molokai, Molokai markers that use the same color numbering system as the Honolulu style. And that's the brush markers that you can either get brush and chisel or brush and bullet point markers. So they use the same numbering system, which I think is awesome. I don't know why they don't do all of the series with the same numbering system, but the Kala markers use the same numbering system as their classic Oahu markers. So just wanted to put that out there. That's my biggest qualm with a hoo-hoo is that I wish they use the same numbering system throughout, especially if they're going to start offering re-inking, uh, re-inker 
bottles of ink, which they're planning on doing, it would make so much more sense to have everything under the same numbering system. And they did change the numbering system on the classic markers. They, the classic markers used to run on the, oh, I know this is going on a tangent, but just hear me out. The original classic markers used to go in the Shinhan marker system, uh, numbering system, and then they changed it to a new markering system, numbering system, but then made it different than the brush markers, which I just don't get. Use the same ink, use the same, you know, they do everything in house from what I'm told, so I don't know why they wouldn't use the same ink. But speaking of the other markers they offer, let's take a look at what the other markers they offer are so you can kind of see how these differ. And I'm gonna go back to my older sketchbook here because I'm really loving that new Ohuhu marker pad, so I kind of want to save it for, <laughs> for better stuff. Uh, we can just sketch on this guy right here. Uh, we can use up the rest of the sheet of paper. Um, so the markers that we're using, just to refresh your memory, I don't I want a brighter color. Let's go with something with a nice bright green in it. So this is, this is May green. So just to refresh your memory, we have the, uh, refresh my memory, cause I mean, it was just seconds ago for you guys. It was like a few days ago for me. Um, the wide marker, May green has a number printed, screen printed right on the side, matte, uh, white barrel, kind of like the Kala markers, honestly. So I thought their numbers probably would match. So we've got a wide tip. We've got this edge, this kind of um, cutoff edge there. Then we've got the chisel edge, which is about the same as the cutoff edge. Let's see, can we see if I can get a little bit, a little bit wider of an edge there? Because I find I could get a little bit wider. There we go. And then you've got this other corner which you can get a really fine line, but not all marker, not all of them work that well for the fine line, but luckily the black does. So let me go to the um, Tropical Vintage, which has kind of, it's kind of like a basic, that would be like your basic markers. And I surprisingly used all of those basic markers, except for the green when I was doing the dog picture, and I did use it on the dog picture. But on the, bl the black one, I noticed I could get a more continuous, well, maybe not. Seems like I was getting a more continuous line, but you know what? It's probably because I was drawing over other stuff. So that's probably why I got the more continuous line with with that because I was drawing, drawing, that's probably it. So I was drawing over wet ink. So that's probably why I got more of a fine tip from the edge. Um, I'm not sure how well the nibs are going to hold up. Uh, usually chisel nibs don't give you a problem wearing down, but I just want to mention that because um, you never know. You never know how long things will hold up. Now let's look at the brush marker. This is the one that uses the same numbering system. This is the same color, G170 May Green. The same as this one here that we just we just used. It looks different because that's a plastic cap and that's the hand colored cap, the hand colored sticker. So on a regular chisel marker, you get that. So it's a little bit wider than what you have there, or you've got that, which is a little bit narrower than you have there. And then of course you can, use a chisel edge and get some finer lines like that. So and the color, the color seems to be pretty consistent. And then of course you've got the brush nib, which I don't find that I get the finest lines with the brush nib. I honestly think that the Honolulu B series is a little bit nicer because then you do have that finer tip. And uh, if you had the Honolulu B series, you'd have that brush nib and then you'd have a bullet nib like the classic markers. I don't have any of the B series though, uh, but this is what the, and this is, um, this is May Green. It's got a different number. Let's see how close it is. It's pretty close, I'd say. Um, and then you've got the chisel tip, <clears throat> but, you, which will have like all of the, you know, lines you can get with the chisel tip. But the, um, the brush nib, you can get a pretty fine line, but eventually the brush nibs do tend to break down a little bit. Then you can pull it out and flip it around or get a replacement. But uh, because the ink flow is slower on a bullet tip, you can get a more consistent fine line. Um, so yeah, there's just a little comparison between the different lines in the Ohuhu family. Oh, there's also the Kala series, which um, has a more limited palette. I think 150 colors in all. I'm just gonna grab this Bud Green because that one looked to be pretty close. So that one gives you a nib that's fine. If you use the chisel nib, the chisel nib will pretty much do everything you need to do in the Kala series. You can get the really fine line and it comes to a pretty good point. You've got the broad line, you've got the chisel like that, and then you could always like angle it for a uh, somewhere intermediate. But the thing that 
I thought was kind of neat about the Kala series is that I thought that like just the way the matte finish of it um, reminded me and the gray band, I don't know, that just kind of reminded me of it being a little bit more matte. I guess that's really the only difference. They all have a gray band on the uh, brush or bullet tip, so... Yeah, they all, they all look nice. They all look like they belong together, except these two are glossy and these two are matte. I think I like the look of the matte, but I mean, it doesn't really affect anything other than just how it looks. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just wanted to show you that in case you were interested. Also, the little slant on the Kala series markers matches the slant on the wide markers. So if you are a fan of chisel tips, you're probably going to like both of these, these lines of Uhuhu markers. Um, but, I mean... Fine tip. I think you could work pretty quickly between Yeah, you could probably use the I think the two the color and the uh even though the marker the numbers don't match, the color numbers don't match, I think they would be really easy to go back and forth with. Um they're I found these fairly comfortable to hold even though they're big. I drew for quite a while on those two pieces of artwork that I did. I was listening to an audiobook and uh, it was a silent patient by the way. Excellent audiobook. I really enjoyed it. And what I did was um, I put my markers just kind of, I folded back the case and I had them on my, my fun art desk upstairs and I just had them in the case like this and it was really easy to see what I had. Obviously it's not that, um, uh, it's not a huge assortment so you can have them all out on your desk and it, and it works pretty good. Um, the only thing I think I would really want them to add, I think they started off with a pretty good selection but if I had my wish I would like to have, um, I would say get rid of the neutral gray 2 and put like a new, put like a cool gray 9 so we have at least one full set of grays. And I would also offer the Colorless Blender as a standalone product because, not because I'd want to use it as a blender, but I think it'd be really fun to uh, have a few of these and then do like um, ombre colors. So like drop like uh, three different colors of ink on there and make your own rainbow gradient marker. I wouldn't, you couldn't add it into the barrel like that because if you did, then, um, then it would, uh, it wouldn't stay mixed, but if you put it on the nib and you had the colorless blender in there, just kind of act as a vehicle, I think that would work. Now, I did have a question. Somebody asked me, can you refill these? So I'm going to, let's see if we can pull the nib out. Let's see, or let's see if we would be able to refill these. I don't see why not. I always test with the blender because it, you know, it doesn't make my fingers filthy. So that's what the nib looks like. And yeah, I don't see why you couldn't drop the colorless blender solution right in there. It's a pretty big, uh, pretty big hole for it too. So that's what the nib looks like. I'll measure it. Um, I don't know if it matches the Copic nibs or not. The bottom side is three quarters of an inch. The top side is, the top side actually, it's three quarters of an inch blade, but it's got a little bit wider, slightly wider of a, um, of width. But the part that goes in the hole is, is three quarters of an inch. And I'm just wondering, does that have to go a certain way? Probably has to go a certain way. You know what? I'm going to look at another one of these and just make sure I'm putting it back in the right way. Let's see. Got the marker face up like that. I think it's going to go the other way. I don't know if it makes a difference, but... And yeah, you couldn't be bigger than three quarters of an inch with that because there are little, uh, there are little pieces of plastic that come in from this side. So... Maybe you could turn it around, honestly. You know, you know, I don't know why it would make a difference, but... Maybe you could, but that's how it comes. So yeah, refilling it's going to be a snap. So that is good. That's what I like to. Uh, that's what I like to see with my products because I have a big bottle of uh, colorless blending solution that I would use for that. So I like them. I think um, these run about uh, four something a marker. <laughs> my math is terrible. So it's probably about four dollars and ten cents a marker or so. Um, uh, and if you go to Ohuhu, you, there's a coupon code Ohuhu Art 10. I'll put it in the video description that you can get 10% off. And sometimes they run sales, and then sometimes there's coupons on Amazon. If these are up on Amazon at the time I publish this, I will post a link to that as well. If not, I'll post a link to the Amazon storefront on um, Amazon if you're going to wait to pick it up from them. But um, Amazon, the uh, Ohuhu web store has free shipping on orders over. 
I think it's $69 in USA, Europe, the UK, and maybe Japan. They, there's a few places they offer that discount. Um, but I'm excited for these. I've never had the wide markers like that before, and I could see myself using them quite a bit. But I think, although I really didn't have much problem using them with this, I think I probably would like to have the smaller markers on hand as well, just to kind of get in and around. Um, so if you want to use these with your smaller markers and you want to match the colors by the color numbers, have them with the brush markers and then you'll be all set. I don't know if these 24 would correlate with like the 24 set of a hoo-hoo brush markers. I'm not sure. Um, something tells me probably not because it does seem to be a very specific arrangement of colors. They seem to be more like your landscape or, des or architecture colors. Um, but I think it's a great start. And um, yeah, I'd like to see some open stock colorless blenders or even just empty markers that you could fill with your own colors that you want. But I would say colorless blenders just because you could take a colorless blender and you could put whatever ink you want into it. I mean, it would eventually get to that color pretty quickly because the alcohol would evaporate um, a little bit faster and or just go a shade darker than what you actually want when you refill it, when you refill the colorless blender and then you'd be all set. Um, and I just think more people would probably be likely to want a colorless blender and an empty marker or either or, so it wouldn't be a wasted product. And, uh, yeah, I really like them. I would like to, uh, maybe, I would probably say it would be nice to have, like, maybe like, um, an earthy pink, like, kind of like, uh, and some earthy yellows and some, maybe some more earthy brown so you have more skin skin tone collection because I could see like taking a pack of just like six skin tones like maybe like go from like a like a pale yellow uh earthy pink uh a couple browns and then take that with me to a life drawing class or something that would be really fun to to work with uh, I love the cases I think they're really well made um I didn't get any cracking on the box when I when I folded it over to use it as a stand that's happened to me before with with these types of markers is that like the, the cardboard isn't whatever paper they use on it is not flexible enough to be used as a stand but this seems to have no issue with that you can fold it either that way or you can fold it in that way um so that's really nice no damage on the box whatsoever it came shipped really well and uh, this came from a hoo hoo not from amazon so maybe it would be different i know amazon can be kind of rough with packaging but um, even if the exterior box got banged around, I think your markers would be protected in their little foam, uh, their foam thing. So I'm going to give it two thumbs up. I'm happy with these. These definitely are not going to be a marker for everyone because, you know, a lot, if you're doing like rubber stamped art, you may never need to cover in a big area like that unless maybe you need to make that perfect shade of cardstock and you ran out and you just want to cover a, do the edge of a piece of cardstock or you want to color a piece of cardstock in and not have it streaky. Yeah, you could do that with these really easily. Um, but I think for the most part, this is going to be for people that want to draw a little bit larger with their alcohol markers, um, have a little more freedom to work a little bit bigger. But, you know, they're not going to be right for everyone. They're not going to be the perfect fit for somebody that works small. Um, but I do like that you can use the different edges to get, you know, the... Uh, um, get the effect that you want. So yeah, if you have any questions, you can let me know in the comments below. Um, the links that are in the video description are affiliate links. So if you make a purchase after clicking on those links, I do earn a small commission, but as always, buy the things that are going to increase um, value for you. you. Buy the things that are going to make the other stuff you have more useful. Now this is just going to duplicate. I can't see these duplicating anything unless you already have the Copic wide markers from back when they used to sell them. So I think this was really smart, came right at the right time when there was no other options for these, and um, I hope they come up with more colors, but I'm happy with what they started with. So well done, a hoo-hoo. Um, just get us some of those clear blenders, will ya? <laughs> and maybe some more earth tones, maybe some more skin tones, especially like, I would love a, actually kind of like, is this lipstick pink? There's a color um, from, I've seen, actually, I've seen several companies come out with, I think it's called lipstick pink or lipstick natural, lipstick natural, and it's just this earthy pink that is great for like, you know, just uh, those warm shadows and lips and, you know, stuff like that, nail beds, that sort of thing. It's just a really nice color to have if you're, we're going to sketch, do like life drawing or something, but hey, I have no, no issues with these. I hope that you enjoyed this review, and if it's something you were interested in, it gave you all the information that you need. Again, I'll show you the swatches so you can see those colors that are in the sets because these are these are what's available right now i have no idea if 
like if they intend on if they intend on expanding but this is what we're this is what we're looking at I would say if you're gonna just pick one um, well everybody's different but um, for me I would say the um, Halcyon Oasis would be the one to try because you've got uh, I could see you throwing that like in a sky and then maybe using your smaller markers to like you know do a gradient on top of that but having that kind of like flushed out there same thing with the um with the greens and the browns you could do dirt you could do animal fur um that's i think that would probably be the most useful one the grays are good too i just i wish they they i wish they would ask me what colors would you put if you could only have six grays i honestly would probably say don't do the colorless blender do and do like um do like a cool gray nine and well you know i guess that's all right i guess that would be a pretty good range but uh if you had the cool gray nine instead of the neutral gray to have the colorless blender but i think the colorless blender being separate would make more sense because then people could get as many as they wanted if they wanted to do special effects but i mean i really don't think there's any throwaway colors here this is fun if you like to do more graphic stuff i was surprised how much i did use the um like the black and the brown and the red and the uh uh, and the blue in there so and I use the yeah I'm I'm surprised how much of that I use too I'm really surprised I use most of these in the water on the landscape that I did so I don't think there was any throwaway colors except that neutral gray, gray is just so close to the cool gray zero why that's I just feel like that's too similar to that and it doesn't have any other neutral grays to go with it I would just be like yeah give us another cool gray because that can go under most anything and then you could come out with a set of warm grays if the cool grays were selling like hotcakes then you could come out with warm grays or just do a range of neutral grays you know if you want to start off with something like that you just do the neutral grays and uh, don't do and why name it cg i mean that's just confusing um so yeah that's my the, the gray but you know if you've if you've <laughs> if you took my marker class i think you probably heard my 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 rant about the the gray series in Ohuhu because I, I do love the brand Ohuhu their gray naming system for the grays drives me a little bunkers because they have so many of them and I think they could really reduce it and maybe make it a little clearer because I think it makes it just too difficult to do you have to stop and think about it and when you're coloring with markers you kind of want to work quick so you can get things to blend together so the last thing you need to do is stop and think when I see CG02 or CG021, I'm thinking, oh, that's a cool gray. I'm going to grab that to work with my other cool grays. Instead of thinking, then I see it's neutral gray. You know, the undertone of that is different than the undertone of that. So, you know, don't do not do things that are that are confusing for people, um, especially when you're, you know, the printing is, is rather small on markers, any marker, even these big, chunky, wide markers. The printing is small, so you're just going to be looking at the numbers, probably not the names, because you're going to make a quick identification and keep on going. Um, especially if you're like me and you like to work fast, um, which you know, if you're working with markers, you probably want to work fast to get them to blend. But anyway, this is probably longer than it needs to be. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this review. Give me a thumbs up if you do. And until next time, happy crafting.